So we, yesterday we talked uh, about the quotation of the Bodhisattva Charya Advatara to get angry at the Bodhisattva for a second and the non-Bodhisattva gets angry at the Bodhisattva for a second then a then, uh, thousand eons of uh, positive karma can get destroyed as we discussed yesterday. So in a similar way, if you make offerings uh, to the bodhisattvas, etc., then uh, the amount of merit created been explained as uh, dependence on the power of the object. So there is uh, many quotations like that. So then uh, if you also get angry in that way, you also uh, destroy all this uh, virtue accumulated over a thousand eons. Then also next to that uh, Aspects. Then also, one's realizations uh, will not come about for a long time. So, like uh, the realizations of uh, subtle impermanence or bodhicitta. So then, if one is not a bodhisattva and gets angry at a bodhisattva for a second. So I don't remember another quotation uh, that is there about this uh, instant of getting angry. So then, so then uh, once, uh, once realizations will not come about for a thousand eons. So if you take that as uh, the basis, then if you uh, get angry at a Buddha, then one uh, for a second, then of course it will even be uh, more than a thousand eons of uh, positive karma being destroyed. So then you can think about ten thousand eons maybe, and then. Uh, have to experience countless sufferings of uh, the lower realms after that. <laughs> so just by uh, getting angry for a second. So, so then if you get angry at uh, the virtuous friend or the teacher, one particular teacher, if you get angry at that person, then of course uh, accumulated merit over uh, hundred thousand eons get uh, destroyed. So that is uh, based on this quotation of getting angry at the Bodhisattva. We can relate it to the Buddha and the teacher, how it destroys uh, accumulation of virtue over thousand eons or ten thousand eons or. 100,000 eons, and in a similar way, one's realizations will not come about for that same uh, period of time. So if you take the Bodhisattva as the basis of explanation, then you can relate it uh, in a similar way to the Buddha and the uh, teacher, the virtuous friend. So if you get uh, angry at the Lama for a second, then, uh, of course, uh, so many uh, positive karma created in the past over a long period of time gets destroyed. 
So that comes from the teachings on uh, correct uh, relation uh, towards the virtuous friends and uh, the drawbacks of uh, not relating properly. So it's explained in those teachings. So how uh, positive karma can get destroyed by uh, a moment of anger. Taking the quotation of the Bodhisattva Charya Advatara as the basis. So then one can relate that to other powerful objects as well. So that's uh, been the case. So then oneself and others, we talked about uh, to exchange self for others, and we have to put that into practice. We also talked about uh, the potentials of the holy objects. So, in a similar way, if you practice the Tonglen practice of giving and taking, then also uh, there has been advised that uh, the Bodhisattvas work for the benefit of all sentient beings. And uh, take this into practice. So that's been explained in uh, many texts. So I, we talked about it yesterday. So it's not that uh, I do those practices of changing self or others. But uh, don't think that you yourself are very superior because you are able to do that, but uh, that's not a real exchange self for others. So there's a, uh, a danger for oneself uh, to get a bit of uh, pride that one is uh, doing these kind of practices. So one should do it uh, in a kind of humble way and without getting distracted and also in secret. Then it becomes pure dharma. Then it is pure dharma. So that's important to do these practices in secret. So the eight verse of mind training, for example, according to those texts, one should uh, practice and one should not advertise these kind of practices. Oh, I do this, I do this uh, tonden, and I do the eight verse of mind training. One should not advertise, but uh, one should uh, do it subdued, secretly. And then uh, there's no danger for getting pride, etc. So, so then also we talked about uh, the kindness of uh, one's parents and the kindness of the guru. So we talked about that yesterday. So that's why. So uh, that's why one should depend uh, upon the lama. Pensu Dobson Chugu Gyatsen's text on the Ma Mudra. Then also, uh, there it says, the 
to generate the non-duality of bliss and emptiness. So this uh, term, uh, non-duality of bliss and emptiness, is actually the quality of the Guru. What is actually the Lama? What is actually the Guru? How do we recognize the Guru? That is... Uh, been explained, it's an emanation of this non-duality of bliss and emptiness. So, emanation of all the Buddhas, the same nature. So, that, that actually are the qualities of uh, the Lama. That's been explained. So then, So then, why are we talking about these things? One should uh, focus upon the drawbacks of uh, samsara and then uh, generate uh, the view of the motivation corner in a small middling scope after that uh, bodhicitta and the correct view of emptiness. So Lama Tsukapa explains uh, these points very clearly and especially the view of emptiness in the context of dependent origination. All sentient beings, limitless sentient beings. All uh, phenomena are just merely imputed. Don't exist uh, truly empty of that. So by depending on this view of emptiness, you will be able to uh, get liberated from samsara. So there's the actual antidote the realization of emptiness to the antidote to its uh, the cause of suffering and one can also by depending on bodhicitta achieve uh, enlightenment so by depending on this view of emptiness and uh, dependent origination one can work for the benefit of all sentient beings so that's why 
l'Amazon Kappa. Uh, of course, a great praise to uh, dependent origination. So that's why. In a similar way, uh, Lamsu Kappa is also very clear about uh, the Tantras, the two stages. So there's many uh, great scholars who praised Lamsu Kappa's uh, works regarding these points. So to uh, abandon the uh, eight worldly dharmas, attachment of this life, focus uh, on future lifetimes, but also not being attached to the happiness of future lifetimes. And then also uh, abandon self cherishing attitudes, abandon the, abandoning the ignorance, and uh, practice exchanging self for others. Then uh, after that, uh, uh, practice the tantras, and then uh, abandon the impure appearance and adherence at uh, ordinary appearance. So the non-duality of bliss and emptiness is actually the actual antidote towards that uh, impure appearance and adherence and at impure appearance. So we talked about the Lama is actually an emanation or in the nature of this uh, antidote of the non-duality of bliss and emptiness. So there is a quotation uh, to the Guru. There is no uh, Guru separate from the Buddhas. So, if we, uh, if we uh, attend teachings or explanations of, of uh, the teachings from uh, the Lama or the teachers, then don't think that uh, Lama or the teacher is different from the Buddhas, that uh, <laughs> the Buddha is separate up there and the teacher is here, two different things. Don't see it like that. So don't see them as separate because all the activities of uh, generating virtue comes or arises from uh, the Guru. Dependence on the Guru's uh, advice and instructions, nothing else. So you have to think in that way. You have to uh, reflect upon uh, correct Guru devotion. That is the most important practice, most important. So if you don't uh, abandon uh, samsara, then of course you don't achieve liberation. 
So if you don't wish that, then it's a different story. If you like to stay in samsara, then different story. But then, if you wish to achieve liberation and enlightenment, then, then you have to depend on the Guru. Then you have to practice. Not merely the words, but uh, practice with the mind. Whatever is been explained in the text is for the purpose of uh, subduing your mind. The instructions of the Guru. That's the most important practice. The most important one. Very important. Otherwise, very important. So there is another quotation. I don't remember clearly. In the Lamrim uh, lines of experience. So all happiness comes from the Guru, from the correct Guru devotion. Yeah. There's an explanation like that. So I don't really remember that quote. So uh, all temporary ultimate goals, those, then uh, if you wish those, then also depends on the Guru, there's another quotation. So that's the essence. So then, it's not that uh, you should think, oh, I only devote myself to the Lama on the big thrones, and uh, when I receive just normal uh, instructions or explanation of the text, then that is not my uh, actual guru. You should not think like that. Don't think like that. That is uh, a fault. So even just normal uh, explanations we get on a daily basis in our classes of the teacher, all gurus, all activities comes from the guru. All, all comes from the essence of the guru. So if you don't uh, uh, act correctly, if you don't uh, practice proper guru devotion, then you create the most heavy negative karma. And that's, uh, that's really true, isn't it? So, where one receives the daily uh, pities or the daily uh, explanations of the text, the classes, think that uh, that teacher is actually the emanation of all the Buddhas. You should think like that. Then, of course, by the power of afflictions and obscurations, we just see ordinary uh, teacher, but that actually is an aspect of the activities of the Guru, to have an ordinary aspect to help us. So then, of course, if we think like that, it's just an ordinary being, that's not correct. 
think that the Guru is the emanation of all Buddhas, all Bodhisattvas, of the, the Tara, of Sakyamuni Buddha, of Manjushri, oh, that Lama, the teacher you receive everyday instructions from, or the classes, that is actually the real Guru, is actually Yamantaka, is actually all the deities, is all the Bodhisattvas. All Bodhisattvas, all Buddhas, all those holy beings. That's actually all within the teacher who teaches you the texts. So all holy beings of uh, the Hinayana, Mahayana and Tantra, all of them actually are in the aspects of the Guru. All of them. All Buddhas, all deities, all Yidams. That's the Guru you receive for daily classes from, the daily, daily instructions, explanations of the text. That, that is actually the real Guru. Then, that's the real Guru. If you don't practice in that way, then there's no enlightenment. There's no other enlightenment being separate from. There's no other quotation. If you uh, want to please all the Buddhas, then you please the Guru. If you please the Guru, you please all the Buddhas. If you don't have respect, if you get angry at the Guru, it's the same as uh, the same faults of uh, getting angry or paying disrespect to all the Buddhas, all of them, all of them, because uh, to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all of them. So then, of course, you accumulate a merit similar to that amount of all Buddhas, all Bodhisattvas. So uh, that's, uh, you should know this the importance of practice proper good devotion. If you please the Guru, you please all the Buddhas, all of them. All of them. And then, of course, the results will be also, according to that, incredible. If you don't act in that way, and you have disrespect or get angry, then incredible suffering you have to experience in the future, beyond end. So that's uh, the case. You should uh, focus on these points. So if you please the Guru, you please all Buddhas. All of them. This uh, quotation has great potential, isn't it? Or oh, this quotation uh, can really benefit the mind. In this life and future lifetimes, and temporarily and ultimate, all future lifetimes, we need Buddhas, right? And the root of all that is uh, dependence on the Guru. And the Guru is the Buddha. The Guru is Buddha. So you should see that. So that the Guru is Buddha, there's many uh, scriptural uh, sources uh, proving that, many quotations. You can see that. And then taken as an example. And then over a long period of time. You should see that the Guru is Buddha. Very important. 
So that's why. So all Buddhas, if it's just the Buddhas appears, then there's the question if it can benefit oneself. If there's a Buddha in the aspect of uh, an ordinary form of human being, then you can practice Guru devotion. You can uh, serve the Guru. You can real practice Guru devotion. So that's uh, very fortunate. So then one can uh, practice Guru devotion. Then practice the real reliance. That's why. If one doesn't do that correctly, then uh, it's possible to be reborn in the lower realms like the hell for a long period of time. So, for example, one day, one uh, lady made a little bit of offering to the Buddha and then the Buddha explained uh, the results of this act. That's uh, you will uh, achieve uh, enlightenment in the, this particular area. Just this lady offered just a little bit with the correct intention. So that's why then there's great benefits of this act. So then the Buddha predicted her enlightenment. So with great faith it was offered. So, so that uh, all depended on a particular kind of correct uh, intention. So there are many stories like that. One uh, for the ordained one. So we can learn from these uh, stories about uh, law of karma. So that's why our intention and faith is very important. So that's why I was thinking about uh, telling you uh, about this. So one should have kind of faith. If one doesn't have faith, then very difficult. And that's also uh, <coughs> so then another quotation Jason Lama La so by the power of making a firm request to the virtuous friend Mm. 
then the benefits of uh, correct reliance on the Guru to uh, the most supreme or superior is uh, to follow the Guru's advice in order to please all the Buddhas to uh, serve the Guru to serve the Guru in different ways to serve the different uh, people people in the retinue of the Guru and then uh, making offerings uh, then uh, if one follow this advice one comes closer to uh, Buddhahood Pabonga Rinpoche also has that uh, great uh, fate to uh, towards uh, Dagwa Rinpoche. So there's also many stories regarding that uh, those events and making offerings to the Guru. Then one becomes closer to enlightenment. So there's many benefits. For example, one glass of water to the Guru, one or just one sweet, just a little sweet offered to the Guru, becomes uh, closer to uh, Buddhahood. So, Momo, maybe if you offer 20 momos or 30 momos to the Guru, then uh, it's like that. <laughs> the benefits, uh, even uh, just one momo or one biscuit to the Guru, uh, one come closer to Buddhahood, leave samsara behind, come closer to Buddhahood every day, every day. One become closer. It's like that. So that is incredible, isn't it? Real, uh, meaningful, incredible accumulation of merit. A lot of merit being created. Incredible. So much happiness. Incredible. Countless form of uh, happiness. So even if you experience suffering physically, but uh, that uh, is not as uh, difficult to experience by having good devotion, difficulties are easy to uh, take into the part. It's like that. Making a small offerings, just a little bit, you become closer to uh, Buddhahood. By the power of uh, respect, making firm requests or with the power of great respect, make firm requests, then uh, all roots of uh, happiness, this future lifetimes, all of it, as uh, the happiness in the life, in the bardo, re rebirth, the root of all that happiness, So uh, maybe I stop. Uh, 
So then. So, in Tibet, Dunjongpa, when Dunjongpa practiced uh, quite a good devotion towards uh, Atisha, then one nun and one cook who made the different types of food a lot of work there was one meditator as well who always uh, was meditating uh, meditating on the stages so then he thought he will have the highest uh, realizations and uh, Don Tompa is uh, translating all the time so he doesn't have time to meditate and the cook is always cooking and doesn't have med time to meditate so I probably get the highest realizations. That's what the meditator was thinking because the other people uh, have to work all the time. So then the question came, who actually had the highest realization? Then he realized that uh, Don Tomba, who was uh, translating and serving uh, Lama Tisha, had uh, incredible, incredible realizations. And the cook also had incredible uh, meditations, uh, incredible realizations, more realizations than the meditator. So then you can see that uh, the benefits of serving the Guru. So uh, establishing uh, the advice of the Guru. Incredible. More superior than meditating. Incredible. To get the realizations of the part. To get more realizations of the part by serving the Guru as a cook or as a translator, more realizations of the part than uh, just meditating without Guru devotion. So, uh, even if uh, the Guru is far away, if you uh, practice correct Guru devotion, establishing uh, his wishes or her wishes, then, then, If one has a guru like that, that's an establishing the wishes of the guru, then incredible. Closer to Buddhahood, incredible. Like that. That's, uh, we can see that in the scriptures, in the stories. So that. So that's why so if one wants to benefit the Buddha Dharma in beings then uh, the teachings de degenerated to a certain extent in Tibet so now it's our responsibility to preserve the teachings of Sutra and Tantra it's very uh, pure uh, tradition. So in order to get the realizations of these uh, stages of the Hinayana, Mahayana and Tantra, the complete teachings of the Buddha, 
So uh, one person can practice all those different levels of the teachings of the Buddha. So there are these uh, teachings of uh, hundreds of uh, great uh, masters of India. So one can study those texts, put into practice, have great faith in those uh, teachings and uh, destroy, uh, it can destroy all doubts and wrong views. So that all explains the stages uh, of the path to enlightenment, all the stages, for the benefit of uh, all beings and uh, the Dharma, for the benefit of beings and uh, Buddhist teaching. It all depends on the Guru devotion. The Guru devotion. It all comes from Guru devotion. All comes from that source. Uh, Lama Shichuba also uh, there's a story of uh, paying correct Guru devotion and seeing the realizations coming about. To uh, be, uh, there's the stories of uh, being, uh, act like being a seat for the Lama or for the Lama's uh, retinue or milking a cow, for example, to serve in that way. So there's many stories like that, how to uh, serve the Guru and his reti retinue. And that's uh, Lama Tisha also uh, explains those th things and we see the same in uh, his disciples. So if you only just knowledge about, if you only know or are a scholar of the texts, that by itself is not enough to preserve the Dharma. That's not enough. Just being a scholar is not enough in order to benefit beings and uh, Buddhist doctrine. So some, some people become great scholars, only think about themselves, never think about practice, don't really practice themselves, then that's not uh, if you don't have that, you've been an incredible scholar, a scholar, only think about oneself, not thinking about sentient beings, having all the knowledge, not practicing, then no benefit. So that's why one should check one's school devotion. No one should see how to practice. Very important. Very important. It's like that. If you can benefit others or not. So it's like that. So, ultimate benefit to sentient beings, you need enlightenment. All sentient beings, to benefit all sentient beings. So that's why one should uh, practice carefully. One should be careful with one's studies and put it into practice. If one uh, don't think in that way, that is uh, more superior than a wish-fulfilling jewel. There's nothing more superior than uh, Guru devotion. Just having Guru devotion, you won't get reborn in the lower realms. If you don't practice Guru devotion and you uh, practice according, not in accordance to that, and you'll be 
born in the lower realms, very difficult to get out of the lower realms. Even if you have a wish fulfilling jewel, you that wish fulfilling jewel will not be able to get you out of the lower realms. It cannot uh, lead you beyond suffering. So it cannot lead you to uh, nirvana or enlightenment. If you just have a wish fulfilling jewel, but the virtuous friend, the guru, the guru, if you uh, have guru devotion, well, if you practice well, then, then, then you you uh, ben- can will benefit the teachings the teachings of the Buddha. The Lord of the teachings, Sakyamuni Buddha, you can serve his teachings, preserve his teachings. And that's our main purpose, to serve the Dharma and beings in that way, by Guru devotion. So, Really? So as we explained yesterday, every day, every year, every month, every week, every month, every second, every every time, to serve the Guru. Then, then incredible. That's the real purification, most uh, precious. Then you don't need, no, don't need to do a preliminary practice like prostrations again and again. Just follow uh, the Guru's instructions. The best preliminary practice, the most important preliminary practice. Incredible to get close to enlightenment every day to please the Guru. One minute, one second to please the Guru. Then, for example, if you uh, are secretary of the Guru or help the Guru, whatever way, you purify all negative deeds. Incredible. So then, mm-hmm. the quotation to uh, mm-hmm. ask the Guru to uh, take you in his uh, compassion. To hold you in this compassion. So then the transmissions. So the calling the Lama from afar. It's not like a, you know. If you say Lama Ken, it's not, it's not that uh, the Buddha or the, the Lama doesn't know and you say, oh, please, no, please, no. It's not Lama Ken. That's not the meaning of Lama Ken. It's not that he doesn't know before and you ask him to know it. That's not the re- that's, that's not the meaning. So then, Lama, what is the meaning of Lama? One's teacher is a Lama. That's what we say, Lama. Is uh, the embodiment of uh, all the Buddhas, or the all knowing mind of all the Buddhas. The wisdom of all the Buddhas. 
one taste with great bliss of Dharmakaya. It is in itself the ultimate nature of all kind gurus. I beseech you, Guru or Dharmakaya, please guide me always without separation. In this and future lifetimes in the body. The wisdom's uh, own illusory appearance, the conqueror of the seven branches, it is uh, the ultimate basis of emanation of all kind gurus. I beseech you, Guru. So, here, uh, the first verse. Uh, refers to the request not to be separated in this future lifetimes in the body. So that's one request, the Guru, to uh, come closer to Buddhahood, to lead us always, wherever we are, Every moment, every second, to come closer to Buddhahood, that's what we request the Guru, to not be separated. Never be separated from the Guru, the emanation of all Buddhas. So that means the emanation of all the Buddhas, or the wisdom of all the Buddhas, to achieve that goal of uh, Buddhahood, the state of Buddhahood comes from the Guru. All realizations come from the Guru. So, knowing that, you request not to be separated. So, every second, whenever we are in life, future lifetimes, or the Bardo, Asked uh, the Guru to be never be separated from us, to lead us. So that's also why we recite in the Lama Chepa, you the Buddha, you all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and deities. And we request in a similar way in that verse uh, of the Lama Chepa not to be separated from the Guru. Not even for an hour or a minute, so to be never separated, always to be without separation. And to stop any separation. So the Guru so the Guru is more superior than all Buddhas. Is uh, more superior. The Guru is more superior. So all Buddhas are very uh, skillful, but the Buddha is even, oh sorry, the Guru is even more skillful, because if there is no Guru, there is no way that uh, the activities of the Buddhas can uh, become manifest. So we need the Guru in order to receive the activities of the Buddhas or the blessings of the Buddhas. The blessings of the Buddhas come only through the Guru by dependence on the Guru. So that's why if you don't have a Guru, then all the blessings, all the activities of the Guru, sorry, all the activities of the Buddha 
the blessings will never enter without the Guru. So, to come close to Buddhahood depends on the Guru. And also to please the, Gu- the Buddhas, all to please all the Buddhas without exception, comes from pleasing the Guru, one Guru. So, the Guru is more precious than all the Buddhas, equal to space. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas equal to space. The Guru is more precious. Likewise, Sakya Pandita, he also had a quotation uh, referring to these points that uh, the Gurus are like a magnifying glass to uh, condense all the blessings of the Buddhas, similar way the magnifying glass. There's a lot of quotation related to that below that particular verse to collect the light rays of the blessings of all Buddhas. So there's also a verse. If one wants to please the Buddhas, one should please the Guru. Practice very good devotion. It's like that. When pleasing the Guru, you please all the Buddhas. In that way, you should take a refuge in the Guru by knowing these points. So if we recite the prayers of taking refuge or the different rituals we recite, then we always uh, read the lines that the Guru is uh, the nature of all Buddhas. The glorious glorious, uh, Guru so is the nature of all the Buddhas. So if we recite those pujas, those uh, prayers, you should uh, reflect on the meaning that actually uh, the Guru is real in nature of all the Buddhas. You should know these points, reflect. So the glorious Guru actually uh, establishes uh, all the activities of all the Buddhas. So one should uh, meditate on those points. Think about it. So when, when we recite those prayers, or those pujas, of course we have our own teachers, gurus. So, to follow the advice of the Guru, if you don't follow the advice, then then it's a danger to uh, lose the contact with the Guru if you don't practice correctly. And then uh, you're stuck for a long time. So, that's why. I should practice uh, correct uh, Guru devotion uh, continuously without a uh, break. Never give up this practice. Study. So if you study your whole life without this, then no point. 
So that's why you should think in this way. Otherwise, later on the obstacles can arise. Then uh, one's own practice to be able to do these practices will not come. If you don't have correct guru devotion, then obstacles can come from you to uh, prevent yourself from practicing. So that's why we should know the intention of the guru, follow his advice the best way we can. Very important, most important. In order to be liberated from samsara, in order to achieve enlightenment, most important, good devotion. So that's why. So, for example, if you do retreats or approximation retreats, then so following the instruction of the Guru, how to do those uh, practices. If you think that the Guru will be pleased by doing so, so think that then also you will get uh, the right conditions. If you don't have the right conditions, but practice correct good devotion, then uh, the activities, or sorry, the blessings to get the right conditions will come. Because uh, the Guru and uh, practicing Guru devotion helps you to purify obstacles, purify all those obstacles by correct Guru devotion. So that's why. Padampa Sangye, the great masters. He said, there's nothing more superior than the Guru. The Guru is more superior than the, than the Buddhas. The activities of the Guru are more superior. If one can, uh, wishes to get realizations, of the common and supreme uh, attainments, uh, temporarily attainments and ultimate depends on the Guru, and nothing uh, separate from the Guru. So the Guru is more superior than uh, the Buddhas. Like that. Likewise, Chepuwa Kadampa Kishi also. If you think there's uh, the deity is mere, mere superior than the Guru, that's not true. If you have the thoughts that the deity is more superior than, than uh, the Guru Vajadara, then you will not achieve any realizations, no common and no superior realizations. One won't have the merit. So if you think that uh, the deity is more superior than the Guru, then one will not achieve the common and uncommon attainments. It won't happen. Chabubha's Kadampakish's uh, uh, instruction. 
So that's why. That's why to establish the wishes of the Guru, to uh, practice morality, keeping the vows, the vows of uh, individual liberation, bodhisattva vows, and the tantric vows, based on that uh, practice, study, likewise, whatever you do in that direction, whatever you do, whatever you put into practice, all those uh, activities, uh, serving the Guru, all that, all of that, should be offering to the Guru and think that the Guru is the emanation of all Buddhas, all of them. Then whatever you do to serve the Guru, to, to clean the room of the Guru, to help the Guru in different ways, whatever you do, making offerings, all of that, think, if you do that, have the discrimination that the Guru is emanation of all Buddhas, all of them, all of them. So, receiving the explanations of the texts, all those teachers are the Buddhas, all of the Buddhas. Think that uh, that way you receive the blessings of all the Buddhas, all of them. You receive the blessings of all the Gurus, then you get very stable imprints. Not any more superior, and that also will purify or eliminate obstacles in the path. So that's uh, one of the most superior forms of practice. So you should think like that. That's why you have to think in that way. To follow the Guru's advice, think about the benefits. Incredible. Very, very important. Every time you serve, whatever you do, making food or serving, whatever. Every minute, you become closer to uh, enlightenment. Closer every minute. You don't have to go on in the lower realms. Every minute, every moment, serving the Guru. That's, you have those incredible benefits, incredible. You should know those benefits. You should think like that. Incredible. Then, unbelievable, unbelievable benefits. More benefits than uh, more superior. Then the whole sky filled with uh, wish fulfilling jewels. They can, those jewels cannot help oneself. Not at all. But uh, to follow the Guru's advice will be really beneficial to come close to enlightenment. Even if the sky is filled with uh, wish fulfilling uh, jewels. They cannot uh, prevent oneself from falling into the lower realms or uh, experiencing suffering, getting good rebirths. They can't help. They can't help 
So even if the sky is filled with, with filling jewels, no benefits. So that's why, like that. So uh, we didn't really uh, start with the transmissions yet, but. Uh, so then, so since the beginning of his lifetime, uh, to uh, motivate yourself, to liberate all sentient beings of uh, the ocean of samsara, I have to achieve uh, enlightenment for that purpose. So generate this motivation. And that one needs to achieve enlightenment for their purpose. And then that is the motivation for the transmission. So listen to the transmission. 